Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we actually were lucky enough to get a microfo microphone for us, so everybody should be able to hear me in the back. Are we good? All right, perfect. So first thing I'm going to start out by doing is going through uh, the bag and seeing what we got. So who here gets the from the farmer again? Anybody? Okay, so a couple. All right, so the first thing we had was some nice local fresh red shard that is also organically farmed. Um, some nice local cremini mushrooms. Some butternut squash. Uh, two Meyer lemons. An avocado. Some golden apples. And some Yukon potatoes. So that was what was in our basket that, that, um, that I had to work with for today. So what we're going to make, um, the first thing I'm going to do is make a little avocado toast um, for a small appetizer. Um, and I took a look at the peel from the Meyer lemons and candied that, as well as the juice from the Meyer lemons and made a dressing. Uh, so that will be an avocado toast with a little bit of Meyer lemon dressing and a little bit of candied Meyer lemon peel on the, on the side of it. And then... The second dish, I took the, I'm gonna, we're going to take the red shard, blanch it and shock it, and then um, we're going to do it almost like a, like a small cabbage roll with the red shard and stuff it with um, a butternut squash and apple hash. So let me um, set this aside and get started. So the avocado toast. Um, if you guys want to take these around. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to pass a pl out a plate to every table so that um, everybody can build their, build their own little avocado toast. And then um, Cassidy and Katie will be going around with a little bit of the dressing just to drizzle on top of, of the toast for you. So first thing we're going to start out with is the avocados. Um, so anybody that got the basket with me on Tuesday, the avocados were a little firm. Um, does everybody, did everybody know how to check and see if an avocado was ripe? Yes? Yeah, so you can, but a lot of times, like this one right here actually still has, um, you can't really see into it to see how green it actually is. Um, so if you press your thumb into it, it should give without being mushy. Um, if it's overripe, the, the skin will actually start to, to crinkle up, wrinkle up a little bit. Um, but if, it, if it's just still a little bit firm, um, but has some give to it when you push it with your thumb, that's when it's ripe. If, if, if it's still green um, and, and really hard, you let it, just let it sit out on the counter for a couple days. Um, if you put it in a paper bag or wrap it in a newspaper, it'll speed it up a little bit um, if you're really looking to use it. So, um, these ones actually out of the bag that came on Tuesday are actually fairly ripe right now. Nice. So, avocados can be a little tricky to peel as well. What you're going to do is, there's a large pit in the center. So, if you, once your knife hits that, if you just roll the avocado straight around, it will split. Then, if you can see here, all you need to do is just kind of twist it and pull it out. And now you can see one side will be clean, the other side has the pit. Um, so you can either take a small spoon and dig, dig that out, or take the butt of your knife. So just being very careful, if you take the butt of your knife and just tap it into the seed, and then twist it, it'll come right out. Um, <laughs> so then, to, uh, so then to get the avocado out from here, what you can do is just take a spoon and run it right along the skin and scoop that out, just like that. And then the skin will separate fairly easily. Either that, or you can also, if you cut them into quarters, the skin should peel off pretty easily. So if you're not looking for the whole half or slices, you can do that and just uh, remove, remove the skin that way. So, 
what I'm going to do here is first thing I'm going to show you guys is the the candied candied lemon. Um, so all I to to make these, what I do is just take a peeler for the lemon, and now once you peel it, you see there's still a little bit of the white pith on the inside. That part will always be a little bit bitter. So what you want to try to do is just take a take a knife and scrape as much of it off as possible so that you kind of just get the yellow of the peel. Then what I'm, what you would do with these is is you need to take the take the peels and actually blanch them in water. So blanch them probably for like 30, 45 seconds. What that'll do is remove the oil and the bitterness from that and then shock them. Return them back to the pan with half like a simple syrup. So it'd be like half a cup of sugar, half a cup of water um, in your pan and boil them for four to five minutes. Remove them. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> uh, remove them, uh, drain them really well, and then just toss them in a little bit, a little bit more sugar, just which will help them stay dry and not clump up on you. So, no, I need some water. Thank you. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of our small French bread here, and just. Cut a couple nice small toasts, then ah French. So the best place in D.C. for French bread um, is Bread First. So Bread First, if anybody's familiar with it, it's a bakery right on Connecticut Avenue um, in Van Ness. Thank you. Uh, they were actually last year. They were the James Beard Award-winning bakery for for their bread on the entire East Coast. Um, so they do a very good job. The, the gentleman that runs the, owns the bakery, Mark Furstenberg, um, he actually has an, uh, one of the very few Americans to actually have an award from the, the French government for his French bread and what he's done for French food. So I'm just going to take these and toast them off just a little bit in our pan. <laughs> All right, so these are toasting. Why these are th these are toasting? Uh, I'm going to take my avocado and just get a couple nice slices out of it. Okay, so now we have a little bit of toast on there. So I'm going to pull that off. So what you want to do is whenever you slice avocado, it will start to oxidize on you, kind of similar to a potato. So if you're not using it immediately, what I would do is just take a little bit of the Meyer lemon that we have, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on that, and then just season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Take our slices. directly on our toast. Take my candied lemon peel, and I'm just going to julienne this very fine. You really, it, it shouldn't be bitter at all, um, but you're still not going to want a large piece of that lemon peel in your mouth. Um, so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of our lemon peel on the top of each, and then Go there, and then just take a little bit of our dressing here. No, I'm good. And drizzle that over the top. So the dressing here, you have the recipe for. It's very simple. It's the Meyer lemon juice, salt, pepper, shallots, 
um, and a little bit of Greek yogurt. Very simple, very clean. Um, and it's nice and bright. So Meyer lemons, if, any, if anybody's not familiar with Meyer lemons, uh, it, is, it is a lemon, but they're not extremely tart. They, they have a lot lower acidity than a normal lemon that we would buy every day are. So they're, they're definitely a little bit sweeter. So you can, you can use the, the juice a little bit more liberally than, than you generally would be able to with a normal lemon. Yes? Yeah, you, you really could use any citrus. It's just right, right now, like we get it, it, citrus is in peak season right now from end of January really until like mid-March. So we are getting a lot of different types of citrus fruits from really all over the world that you normally wouldn't see. So this time of year, I would, I would try to grab something that you don't normally see because Whole Foods, really any grocery store will have, will have a, a lot of different choices as far as citrus goes right now. So, did anybody make their toast yet? <laughs> What's that? So yeah, so if you guys, guys want to make your, um, your little avocado toast, like, as I said, I think we have Cassidy and Katie that will actually be walking around with the dressing to, to dress the toast for you. Yes. What's that? My neck? Why? <laughs> oh, my pin. <laughs> well, guys, one, one, I like to talk because there's no way I'm coming to these without running my mouth for a second. <laughs> but really what I want to talk about is about Kyle. You guys know him. He's a sustainability chef at AU. Um, he does all of our cooking demos. Um, but Kyle, for the last year, has been going on a journey for his professional career. Um, which culminated last week where he went to the Culinary Institute in Hyde Park, New York. And as you can see on his um, right-hand side of his lapel, he has a big green um, button. That's his Professional Chef 2 certification. It's one of the hardest certifications to get next to the Master Chef 1. Which if you, you raise your hands, that's how many you probably have right now in the United States. Um, extremely proud of him always, but this is a, a great achievement. So if you can give him a hand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't walk with that upside down. <laughs> How are the avocados? Okay, so our, for our second dish, the, the first thing I want to start out by doing is taking our shard. <clears throat> Sorry, let me, I'm just going to start a little bit of water to get it boiling. <clears throat> Take our shard. Um, now, some of the shard that you get will have uh, a very thick, heavy stem. Um, so what we're going to need to do on these is kind of just go at least a little bit of the way up and pull the stem out. So this, um, not that this is not edible, not that it's garbage at all. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. It's, it would be very similar to using uh, celery. Um, so what we can do, we can actually like dice it up and put the stem in the hash. Uh, it pickles very nicely, it holds very nicely. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of things you can still do with the stem. So now for this, you, you do want to try to keep the leaves as whole as possible. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to blanch them and shock them. Um, so all that is is we're going to take them, drop them in boiling water for maybe five to ten seconds, pull them out, and immediately put them in ice water. Uh, so what putting them in the ice water, uh, what that does is it removes all the gases from cooking them um, and makes sure that it, they stay really nice and bright and green for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this so that it steams a little bit for me. Okay. So as soon as that starts to turn like a dark green and wilt, we can pull that out. And go directly into our ice. 
to chill it back down. Okay. So just set that aside, and we'll come to the back to that later. So for the hash, I'm going to start out. I'll take the take our stem that we reserved, just dice this up very small, and then a little bit of onion. Dice this up as well. Uh, now for this hash, you're really going to kind of want to the way we're using it, you're going to want to kind of try to keep everything small. It'll make it easier to stuff back into the shard a little bit later. So why I'm going to get these started with just a tiny bit of chopped garlic in them and sweat that down. In the meantime, I am going to take our golden apple, dice this up. Um, you can peel this if you like. Uh, I actually like to leave the peels on, especially an apple like this. They're, they're fairly thin. Um, they're not going to be a peel that is really intrusive. And it, they hold a lot of the, um, the nutrients of the apple stays in the skin. So it's, it is healthier to leave them on. Set this aside. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the lemon juice on this as well so they don't turn brown on us. The side, yes, yes, you can use kale, um, you can use cab cabbage leaves with yeah, it's just it's just like a stuffed cabbage. Um, so anything that really has has a large enough leaf, uh, grape leaves, you could le you could use, um, especially if you're doing more of like a Mediterranean themed meal or anything. So yeah, any leaf that would be large enough to, to stuff, it would be perfectly fine. So just so happened, shard was what we had in, in, our, in our bag today. So while that's going, I'm going to take the butternut squash. Um, so butternut squash, you can, you can leave the skin onto this. It's not going to be nearly as appetizing. Um, so what I would do is just a normal peeler. We'll get that off. Um, and then we can dice that up. The important thing about this is, is trying to make sure that everything that we cut up is about the same size so that it, it all cooks evenly and when we're eating it all gets bites about the same size. So there we got our um, butternut squash in there. I'm going to take a couple of our cremini mushrooms, dice, dice up our creminis, add them in as well. They can, they can go in with the butternut, They'll, they can handle a lot of heat. And at this point you can, normally we wouldn't season anything till the end, but what you can do here is actually take a little bit of salt and season them. And what that'll do is, especially the butternut squash and the potato, it'll start to draw the, the liquid out of that earlier. So that when we season in the end, you, you don't draw the moisture out um, at the end of cooking. And you hold on to a lot of the, a lot of the, the color and brown. So once the, um, once those butternut squash have a have a little bit of color on them and go for a couple minutes, we can add our diced potatoes into that, as well as our diced apples right here at the end. Um, so the potatoes should only take about five minutes to cook. So after we add them and they start to caramelize a little bit, um, I'm just going to add a touch of water to try to get whatever fond and stuff, whatever has been caramelized on the bottom of the pan, pull that off and get that flavor back into um, everything that we have in the pan. You can also, you can use wine, um, you, can, if you, you can use a touch of vinegar, like a nice sweeter vinegar if you want to add a little bit of that flavor into it. So um, there are a lot of different things you can add into that. So then we're just going to sit here and let this cook down for about 10 minutes until we have um, our hash stuffing. So do we have all this stuff on the table yet? They are? OK, so everybody should have a plate of this on their table. So what you have on your table is the stuffing um, and the shard leaves. So let me 
see, I'm actually going to move this real quick so you guys can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> that didn't really help, did it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. So what I'm going to do, so now if your leaves are, are smaller or if you want to make a bigger roll, what you can do is simply take a couple of them and overlap them. I have a little bit of the stem here that I want to get off. So, and then just try to make sure that at least the inside is a little bit dry for what we're doing. So then I'm just going to take a small spoonful of our stuffing. You want it in the center, but kind of towards one side. Then we're going to start at the bottom end, fold it right over, fold these sides in, and just roll it just like that. And we'll have a nice little pocket. So then. What you want to do with this is you can either, if these are, if everything's still warm, the hash inside is still warm when you stuff it, um, you can serve it just like that. It'll, the stuffing will heat the, the, the lettuce right through itself. Um, you can sear them so that you get a nice little char and caramelization on the shard itself. Um, or you can, you can even do this ahead of time and chill them. And then just to bring them back, you would just want to steam them a little bit. So, and as we were talking about one pot meals, the hash and stuff, you can also do that and if you like using your crock pot or if you want to set something and then walk away, do a lot of other things, you can just toss everything in a, in a little bit of olive oil, season it, put it in your crock pot. Um, I turn it on a higher setting and just come back to that about an hour later and it should all, all cook together. Um, it'll, the only thing you'll lose with that is a little, a little bit of the texture. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tend to cook down on you a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is actually take this and I'm going to sear it off just a little bit. So if everybody wants to go ahead and, and you guys can make yourselves a, a small, um, yes. Yes, if anybody needs help rolling, I actually have gloves up here if anybody's worried about getting their hands a little messy. Um, you can if you want. Okay. <laughs> so, um. I don't know if any of the tables right up, right up around here can smell this right now. Um, in just that little bit of searing, you're really getting kind of a little bit of char and smoky flavor into it. It'll kind of just add a little bit of, little bit of depth to it. You can also serve this with a little bit of that, uh, the same dressing if you want. That'll actually be, it's, the acidity will help cut through um, all the richness of the, of the filling itself. I don't have it. Katie has it. All right. Any questions? Sorry, what's that? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, well, the question we had was, um, should you add water to your, to your, st or salt to your water when you're blanching it? Um, yes, definitely. Anytime you're, you're boiling potatoes, um, really blanching anything, you do want to add a little bit of salt to your water to just help um, s season it a little bit. So, any other questions about today? Yes. Yeah, so you, you can add nuts or raisins. Um, if, if you're a fan of quinoa, if this is really going to be like a vegan meal, I, I would definitely add some type of um, 
whole whole ancient grain that has a lot of pro protein in it. So quinoa, farro, um, spelt. So Joanne had a had a recipe that she wanted us to do with spelt last week, and um, happened to have a rough time getting spelt. And then all of a sudden, on the day after we did the recipe, I got six cases of spelt. <laughs> so now I've. <laughs> So we're, we're going to be using spelt for the, for the next several weeks around here. <laughs> um, Joanne? Spelt? <laughs> yeah. So if you're, if, it's, it's one of the, the six ancient grains that, um, that were very first cultivated. Um, they, they, encompass, they have a lot of r really rich in vitamins. It's a whole grain. Um, a lot of protein in it. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. So Whole Foods would have it. Um, farro is is a very similar looking and tasting grain. It gets a little chew. It gets kind of a little chewy. So has a decent amount of starch in it. You can almost make a. You can almost take like farro or spelt and make a make a risotto out of it. So. Yes. I a touch a sage in there actually. So. Yeah, yeah. Any any fresh herbs and stuff that you have in your garden or growing at this time of year, at whatever time of year, yeah. I always I always add to try to add a little bit of fresh herb or for any reason, whether it is to if it's at the end, I'll add like cilantro or or green onions or, or chives or because it's kind of brighten something up. Or again, yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, and, and like I said, if you if you wanted to add a grain to it, it could, it could be easily be a vegan could easily be a vegan entree. So, yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, they do. So, especially if you're if you're taking chip, chip like from a dried chickpea, um, definitely.